So distribution of blood is circulated to maintain perfusion of all cells, tissues, organs, and body system. Inadequate distribution of lack of perfusion can lead to shock and many different forms of shock. In this slide, we're looking at what may cause the dilation and then the porous or leaky uh, blood vessel. As distribution of blood is coordinated throughout the blood vessels as it comes off the myocardium or the heart as a pump, this life uh, line fluid and blood circulated conditions that may cause a dilated and or weaky blood vessel are conditions such as allergic reaction, anaphylactic shock, more specifically, sepsis, and spinal cord injuries. These are distributive shock or types of distributive shock causing the container or blood vessel if you will to become dilated and as the container is dilated we lose a volume we lose a volume now in allergic reactions and sepsis we can tell where this volume is being distributed because it goes outside of the vessel intravascularly and into the tissues and we get a lot of edema or swelling another type of shock that we discuss is hypovolemic is either hemorrhagic where a person is bleeding out as this pictorial of a cup is cracked we lose a lot of blood or whatever fluid that was inside this container so this could be due to some type of trauma or injury or laceration to a blood vessel and then we have non hemorrhagic shock where the person is just losing volume either through uh, not replacing it and using a lot of that volume or there is an acute change in their um, GI tract causing them to have some nausea vomiting and diarrhea and this volume is lost and is not replaced so another cause of shock is hypovolemia two categories is hemorrhagic and non hemorrhagic last type of shock is it called an obstructive shock and in this slide it is showing you that blood is coming from the pulmonary pulmonary artery and then sent out to the pulmonary vasculature for it to regain oxygen it then enters back into the left atrium however as it's coming back in indicating by the red line that green cross is a blockage blocking the blood from returning Again, we're not showing on this slide anything to resemble the windpipe or the trachea, the bronchus, right and left main stem, or any of the bronchioles and then terminal endings of alveoli. So this has nothing to do with the exchange of air from atmospheric pressure through the pulmonary conduits. It's just showing you the blood flow that's coming out from the heart, getting this oxygen and returning back to the heart, there's an obstruction not allowing it to return back to the heart. So obstructive shock, we're looking at in this case, pulmonary embolism. There are other cases such as a tension pneumothorax and pericardial tamponade. These all obstruct The blood flow throughout the body. Blood cannot fill the heart with the tension pneumothorax. As the heart is compressed and it no longer has any of its uh, residual volume or its initial volume for it to eject out, so the cardiac output is decreased with tension pneumothorax. And pericardial tamponade, this is where blood fills up around the heart and the pericardial sac compressing the heart not allowing it to fill up and therefore not allowing it to eject your cardiac output so we've gone over distributive shock sepsis allergic reaction anaphylaxis shock and then neurogenic 
as a result of spinal cord injury. We've also gone over hypovolemic shock, which falls under non-hemorrhagic and hemorrhagic. And then now we look at obstructive shock, the pulmonary embolus, the tension pneumothorax, and the pericardial tamponade. Now there is shock as a result of the heart just failing, and that would be called cardiogenic shock. That is either the heart itself cannot pump because of an irregular and very detrimental cardiac arrhythmia, such as ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation. This could also be narrow complex ones that are just so fast the heart cannot empty and blood pressure is low. This can also happen when the heart suffers from a heart attack and the heart muscle becomes too ischemic and weak to push and eject blood volume and maintain cardiac output. Besides cardiogenic shock, the last one would be our metabolic shock. And in this case, we're looking at something similar to sepsis. But we add in other things such as uh, hyperglycemia, where the body is constantly pouring out to it because of the mismatch in circulating blood sugar volumes. And as a result of the lack of insulin for the body to use the sugar, it's creating new sugar sources from poor sites using fats and muscle and tissue as a secondary and third energy source. Then this causes the buildup of a lot of acid 